Sure, my name is Beth Parker and I live in the West End on Oxford Street. My background in education is that I have a bachelor's degree in nutritional sciences from Cornell University and then a PhD in kinesiology with a specialty in exercise physiology from Penn State University. I have two children, ages seven and five, and they go to the environmental sciences magnet at Mary Hooker. to send a strong message that we care about education in Hartford. Even if the outcome of this election is not going to be contested and it is pre-decided to send a message that parents, community members, and people in Hartford care. The more people we have turn out and vote, the more that sends the message that we have an invested and incited and enthusiastic community who is willing to step up when it counts and be involved in education. So I think honestly we vote because A, it's our right and we are incredibly fortunate to have that right and B, it sends a message that we care and we're involved and we're committed. For several reasons. The first is that we need parents on the Board of Education. I think when we talk about educational reform, one of the big messages that we need to get out is that we need parents at the table. We need parents involved. We desperately need families and communities to be involved in improving education in Hartford because teachers, administrators, and corporate members, they can't do it alone. We need the support of families and parents. So having parents on the Board of Education that understand the system, understand the challenges, champion the positives, is critical to the reform effort. So I would say first and foremost, whether it be me or someone else, we need parents on the Board of Education. Secondly, I think we need people on the Board of Education who offer a variety of skill sets because a good board has strengths and weaknesses in different areas when you talk about the individuals. So from my perspective, as a research scientist, as an educator at University of Hartford, my skills are in working with community members, teaching, understanding the challenges of a teaching or an academic environment, analyzing data, not forming an opinion on an issue until I understand both sides of the issue and I've seen the data that both support and refute that issue. I also have skills in terms of working with people and understanding that it takes a team-based approach as much as it does in science and teaching, it does on the Board of Education as well. So for me as a board member, what I want the public to understand is that I offer strengths that I think really will help the Board of Education at this point in time continue to work towards offering a great education for every single child who's in the city of Hartford. I think taking a moment and looking at the issue with respect to the, both the qualitative and the quantitative data that are offered on the perspective of that issue. As a parent, and I know this firsthand, it is extremely easy to get very passionate and opinionated about education because it involves the thing nearest and dearest to all of our hearts. But look, if solving education was easy, we would have done it 50 years ago. If it were something, something in which there was one opinion, one perspective, one side, we would offer a great education in Hartford. There would be no obstacles. We would know it, and we would solve it, and we would address it. But it's not. There's two sides to every single issue, multiple sides. In fact, as people say, there's three sides, really, his side, her side, and somewhere in between. And that's true, I think, of education as well. There's all these multiple perspectives multiple issues and so I think the single biggest attribute that I can offer to the Board of Education or as a Board of Ed member is the ability to really critically assess and analyze all of those different sides both from the quantitative numerical standpoint and the qualitative personal perspective, emotional perspective, reality perspective and form an opinion based on the synthesis of all of that information. And I think that measured perspective is what we need when we move forward in education because there truly is never one right answer, there's one best answer based, best on, the best, based on the best information that we have with the facts and information at that time.
Well, I think the most important thing is, first of all, not to make it about those two sides. You know, it's great that we have five appointed members in that certainly the mayor has the ability to appoint people who might not otherwise run for the Board of Ed via public election. So that's one perspective. Those are five very different voices. And then there's the elected community members who have a responsibility to the constituents, the people that they represent. So I think first and foremost, we have to understand that although there's that distinction, it's important not to always make it about those two sides because that is very fractitious. Second of all, I think that as an elected Board of Education member, you have a responsibility to be accessible and be available. And that has its detriments. It means that if you're in the grocery store, someone comes to you with a concern or calls your cell phone, you have a responsibility to get back to them because you are the person that is integrating and synthesizing that community perspective and taking it to the board. That is a perspective that other Board of Education members, the appointed ones, may not have because they not, may not be in the schools every day. They may not be in the education community every day. They may not be struggling with the lack of a neighborhood school or the community school model or the magnet school model or choice or navigating the system. So the second thing that as a elected Board of Ed member you need to do is be accessible. And I think this is the single biggest attribute that the elected members have to have a willingness to take time out of their life to be that community oriented available Board of Education member because you are the voice of people who otherwise might not have a voice and might not be heard. And then I think the third aspect of the elected Board of Education members is that they need to be able to take a stand against something that they firmly believe in and make their opinion known or ask a tough question or raise an issue that doesn't get to be raised, like the identity of Hartford Public Schools going forward, the importance of the community school model. Even if it's not going to get anywhere, they need to be able to make that opinion heard, raise it so it's in the public consciousness, but do it in a way that's still team oriented. At the end of the day, the board has to work well together. I cannot understate that. As a board of education, if we want to have effective management and effective oversight of the Hartford public school system, we need to work together. We can't work against each other. That's counterproductive. So I think as the elected board of ed member, you have to have the fine balance between working with the rest of the board, understanding when you sacrifice the battle to win the war, but also understanding when an opinion or issue is important enough that you can state your voice even if it's the losing opinion, you can state your voice and simply let it represent the people that elected you. Well, we're a dichotomous system. So on one hand, you could say for certain kids who are fortunate enough fortunate enough to get in a lotto and get into one of the top performing magnet schools, we're a five. I think the education offered at some of these schools is on par with the best schools in the country. So for certain students, this system is doing extremely well. And I look at my own kids' experience at the environmental sciences magnet, and I'm impressed and overwhelmed by the quality of the teachers, administrators, and education that they're receiving. So that's great. On the other hand, you could say for the students who don't get into those magnet schools, their top choices, the students that are, that are at the continuously lower performing schools, we're probably at a one. Because in a way, we've replicated the Connecticut achievement gap in the city of Hartford with our lotto system right now. And granted, we're at an awkward phase in terms of our portfolio district where some of the best schools have really improved. Some of the lower performing schools have really gotten left behind in part because we don't have a strategy for really assessing and fixing what's wrong with these schools. So if you average those two, I would say that we are probably about a three. But again, the reality is there's a lot of heterogeneity in that spread. On the other hand, I do just want to point out that when you talk about test score data, when you talk about how that measures students and how we should use that as a benchmark and because it was flat, what do we think about you know, the, the education in Hartford? I'm very cautious about using test scores. I understand they're our most quantifiable rubric. I understand that the data that we have most available to us, but there is not one educator, teacher, 
parent administrator out there who would disagree with this statement, which is that education is as much about the whole child, the soft skills that we teach a child, the career skills that we teach them going forward as it is their ability to take a standardized test. So one thing that I think we need to be very hesitant about is only using standardized test scores is our rubric with which to measure student achievement. Because I think when we do that, we ignore everything else that is going on with students for the good or the bad. And then finally, when we talk about test scores remaining flat, I think we also have to be careful of the numerous factors that affect standardized test scores, especially when we look at them as averages across years. There are many, many factors that go into educating a child, environmental, health, scholastic, teacher, family, and when we just analyze test scores, it gets very difficult to assess the impact and the changing impact of all those factors. So when we are asked to rate student achievement in Hartford, yes, we have to go by test scores because it is what we do nationally, locally, and statewide. But on the other hand, I think as a school system, we need to get better at also understanding the different ways in which we can assess student growth and achievement and success in Hartford. Right now, I think we're at a real crossroads with Hartford Public Schools. And really, in essence, that question is, what is the identity of Hartford Public Schools? Do we care about providing the best education that we should for each student? If so, right now, that is a heterogeneous mix of magnet schools, choice system, charter schools, and sending kids out of neighborhood to a better school than their neighborhood school may be. So that would be the first. The second would be if we care about Hartford Public Schools as an entity, the identity of Hartford Public Schools as a school system, then we're talking about a system in which every child receives an education and a high quality education that's more focused on the entity of Hartford Public Schools itself. So bringing up those neighborhood schools so that the neighborhood schools, which offer critical resources, social services, family support, and identity to a neighborhood, become the real identity of the system. And I think that's the biggest challenge facing the school right now because if you care about the best education for a Hartford kid, regardless of the identity of the system, then doing what we're doing, creating more magnets, creating more opportunities for kids to go out of the district, opening up more choice seats, augmenting the lotto system, educating parents to navigate that becomes the really important aspect, the area of growth that we need to focus on. But if you care about the identity of Hartford Public Schools, or if we do as a school system, in terms of the school itself that's located in the neighborhood, seeing that school as a hub of resources and community and family engagement and parental involvement, then what we really need to be focusing on is pouring our resources into increasing the performance of those lower performing neighborhood schools and making them hubs of the neighborhood, the identity of the neighborhood. And I think right now, we're at a real crossroads in the system, and to me, until we really address that and talk about that and formulate that, it's difficult to know where to go. It's difficult to really focus our growth and our improvement because on one hand, you see resources and time and Board of Education time spent approving the opening of new magnet schools or increasing spots or going after more choice spots in suburban districts or approving charter schools, right? So that's one focus. On the other hand, if the focus is on the second, which is the identity of Hartford Public Schools in the neighborhood model, not necessarily the original portfolio model, then the time and resources becomes aimed at identifying the really critical obstacles to learning in those neighborhood schools, expanding the community school model, being more efficient with Title I dollars in the schools that really need it, and emphasizing how to bring up those neighborhood schools. And I honestly think until we have a critical discussion on that, until we really address that issue, we're going to continue to struggle as a school district.
Well, I think first of all, we need to assess the rubric and the benchmark by which we're considering students ready to take college classes. Because again, we talk about career and college readiness, right, in Hartford. So I think when you say, how do you address the fact that only 5% of students are ready to take college classes, I would ask myself, well, of those percentage, how many should or want to take college classes? How many are career ready versus college ready? So I'd like to see the question reframed in that perspective rather than just college ready, also career ready because I don't think that simply focusing on college preparedness is necessarily the best rubric of how effectively we're educating our high school students. But secondly, I think we do have some answers here because we have the new public act that was passed to synergize the curriculum between high school students and incoming freshman students. And that was aimed, remember, at also effectively removing the remedial classes that community colleges were um, offering and instead kind of mainstreaming all remedial students into the mainstream classroom. So there is going to be some more curriculum, common curriculum and work between community colleges and high school students to really, and high schools and curriculum to really kind of streamline that curriculum so that we are more focused on getting high school students to the community college entrance level. But then I also think that we need better tracking. And again, this is the research scientist and me coming out. We need better data to really understand what is it that our students are not prepared for. Because when we say what they're not prepared to take college classes, is it curriculum? Is it maturity? Is it academic ability? Is it environmental? Is it family support for the college atmosphere? What in particular is it that is the barrier to our students effectively being able to transition into college readiness if that's the appropriate path for them? And so as a Board of Ed member, to answer that question, I would want to see far better data, more tracking, more information that allows us to assess why that's happening and then better be able to drive the accountability based on the specific weaknesses that we identify. Well, I think the most important step is that we need to identify who we're looking for and who the best person is for Hartford Public Schools. Because the best candidate for Hartford Public Schools may not be the best candidate for Bridgeport or Waterbury or Simsbury or Washington DC or Chicago. So simply saying we're gonna do a national search as we've transitioned into, as opposed to internal search for first, certainly that's a step to identifying that we want a national caliber candidate. But we need a better understanding of who would fit Hartford Public Schools. And I think then you get into some real issues in terms of what we're looking for. Are we looking for someone that will continue the reform process as is? Certainly to change dramatically at this point in time, I think we can all agree would be an unwise decision simply for the progress that we've made. On the other hand, are we looking for someone that feels confident enough to come into the system and really assess what's working and not, and not just rubber stamp things? I think that there's probably truth to that. Third, do we want someone who knows the system well? I mean, Hartford Public Schools is very unique. This area is unique. We have strong voices and strong opinions and strong problems and huge benefits and positive issues. So on one hand, Yes, you want someone of national caliber, but you also want someone who really understands the system and doesn't get trapped in certain aspects, more contentious, superficial personality or community-based aspects that detract from the real business of education. So I think the way to ensure that we get the best superintendent is certainly to try and attract the top talent, absolutely, but also really identify what it is we want and really identify with the help of the community, the constituents, the teachers, administrators, parents, corporate members, what would make the best candidate for Hartford Public Schools. And again, be confident in the decision that we make collectively of who we're looking for. That's a tough question. One attribute. Hopefully Single they'd be goal. such a well-rounded person that they'd have multiple attributes and no weaknesses whatsoever. Um, 
And I could list a whole list of what I think makes a good superintendent. But I guess at the end of the day, all professional characteristics aside, all personal attributes aside, I would say it is this belief and this passion that children are the absolute most critical resource we have to offer in the city of Hartford. And if you believe that, and you believe that all decisions should be made based on that premise, based on the good of the children, based on the fact that we have this precious, valuable commodity whose lives we impact directly as superintendents, board of ed members, community members, if you believe that and have the passion for that, then I think that is the single biggest attribute you can bring to the table as a superintendent. To conclude, what I would say is this about electing me or anybody to the Board of Education. What we should all be asking ourselves is, who will best serve on the Board of Education? Who has the time, who has the commitment, who has the passion, who has the enthusiasm? Who do I want out there working for my kids, for the community? And I've said all along, if it's me, that's great. If it's not me, I'll know that I've put my best foot forward and stepped into something that I believe in and put myself out there because I believe that it's important for parents to be involved in education in Hartford. And I would hope that everyone out here watching this, being involved in this, can think to themselves, if there's one thing I can take away from watching her interview, it's that we can all make a difference. We can all make small steps, especially in education in Hartford, especially with respect to the community and parents and families. So for me personally, if there's one thing that I get out of this and give out of this, it's this belief that maybe I've motivated one other person to think similarly to me, which is that we believe in this system, we care about this system, we care about our children, and we have this amazing ability to make a difference in a multitude of ways, either on the Board of Education or simply by being present in your kid's life at the school bus every morning. So for me personally, it would be that belief that we can all make a difference that drives my candidacy and drives my hope that you'll vote for me, but also use it for yourself to think about the ways in which you can be involved.